It's hard to believe that a PC that's this clean can cost just $500, and today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to build it for yourself. We're using a couple of off-the-wall kind of parts that you probably haven't used or seen before, but I'm gonna make this build guide as repeatable as possible because I think this is a sweet spot in terms of value at the $500 price range. Let's dive in. Uh, terrible choice of words there. Let's not dive in anywhere. Actually, just avoid the ocean completely. Let's check this build out instead. And real quickly, since I know my audience is always interested in saving money when building and selling gaming PCs, today's video sponsor, GVG Mall, can definitely help you out with that. I've worked with GVG Mall for so long now and have bought probably close to 100 keys myself, and they're hooking you all up big time with the 25% off discount if you use code ZTT18 with the link in the description. GVG Mall has Windows activation keys as well as Microsoft Office, game keys for platforms like Steam and Origin, and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards. Activating Windows couldn't be easier, just paste in the key that you get instantly after paying on the website, so remove that ugly unactivated watermark for good. Don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off with the link in the description. Starting with the CPU like normal, here we have the Intel i5-10400F, and honestly, I got a little lucky on this one. This was originally posted on Jawa for 80 bucks, which is still a banging deal, but since I'm friends with AES Tech Gaming who is selling it, I got a little discount down to 70. If you randomly look at the CPU any day of the week, you may only find it available for like $100 used, and and if that's the case, I recommend just spending a few bucks more and getting it new for like 110, but these often do sneak down to the 70 to $80 range, which is exactly when I would snipe it. This six core and 12 threaded chip is a beast that boosts up to 4.3 gigahertz, and you can realistically pair this CPU with graphics cards up to the 3060 Ti-ish level of performance without worrying about a bottleneck. So this is one of my favorite options to go with for budget to mid-range builds and flips. Another favorite that I have is this MSI Z490-A Pro motherboard, and that's because for whatever reason, it's been going on sale over on Woot for just 50 bucks. This actually happened two separate times now, possibly even more, but both times that I saw the sale, I grabbed two of them for this price. If you can't find a deal like this, feel free to just grab any B460 or Z490 motherboard that you can find a good deal on. And honestly, there's a lot of Z490 boards floating around the used market lately, so that's where I would personally recommend you aim. Next up, we got the RAM, and this is the Timetech Conduit White 2 by 8 gigabyte kit that's clocked at 3200 megahertz, and this is available almost every day of the week over on Newegg for $36. You may have to do some digging though, but it is sold under Newegg Sellers if you're using PC Part Picker. And I have seen slightly longer shipping times with this brand from Newegg, but that shouldn't matter too much as it's been a clutch purchase for us for a ton of different builds. We actually use this set of RAM often in our Foss Nova and Icebreaker gaming PCs, which we sell on ZTTBuilds.com. All of those PCs just got upgraded, by the way, to a newer version with higher end components without raising the prices. And if you want to check those out, I'll have a link down in the description. Going back to our build though, for the SSD, I just got another standard Team Group MP33 512 gigabyte NVMe drive. And these were on a ridiculously killer new egg sale down to $22. Now, the average price of these is typically about 27 bucks, so when I say killer deal, I'm only talking about saving four or five dollars, but either way, I'm always trying to save some money, and I know you are too, and that's the type of thing that gets me excited. What also gets me excited is a killer power supply deal, and that's because you can only find them like once a quarter these days, but here I found the Apivia Prestige 600 watt, and I've been using this in a lot of my budget builds lately. This is still a very well-priced 80 plus gold certified unit, and more importantly is that it's actually rated tier C on on the PSU tier list, which is all I personally really care about. I'll let the experts do the PSU reviewing. Linus Tech Tips is about to enter that mix as well, so we all need to be prepared for that. But yeah, if they say this is tier C and safe to use for budget builds, you better believe I'm gonna follow that because we're kind of desperate out here for solid budget PSU deals. For today's build, I added some Asia Horse white cable extensions, which add $19 to our total, but I think it's always worth it. And we do actually have one more Asia Horse product in here, and this one, I don't know if you'll think it's worth it or not. This is actually a standalone GPU sag bracket and cool with some RGB action, and since they sent this to me over like a year ago, I think, I figured now was finally time to use it. You absolutely don't need to copy products like this if you're following along at home, but honestly, this is pretty dope, and I really think it adds a lot of value here to our build. This GPU that we're using is a bit of a bigger boy and can sag a bit, and since it's also a black GPU, I figured the extra white and RGB here really spruces up the build from an aesthetic perspective. I'm absolutely not worried about the cooling of our setup today, but having some extra fans underneath the GPU will give us some better temperatures, which we'll see in the upcoming benchmarking section. The other cooling product we have in here is the Thermalrite Assassin X 120 SE ARGB, and this has been my go-to white air cooler for pretty much the entirety of 2023. These only ever cost about 22 bucks, and I buy like 10 of these at a time, and they'll have no problem cooling any Ryzen 5 or Intel i5 unit that you can install underneath it. And next up for the case that everything is housed inside of, this here is the Deepcool CC560WH, and I actually used the black version of this recently in a Flippin' Friday episode, which you can check out in the upper right-hand corner. I absolutely love this case for budget builds, even 
system more so for budget PC flips, but the value in this is that it only costs $55. You're getting either an all white or all black design with some airflow potential here in the front, but it also comes with four LED fans, but this is where the only real downside of the case comes in. These LED fans only work with this color that you're seeing now and you can't change it. And since this is Deepcool's brand color, it all kind of makes sense. It's a cool color in my opinion, and you can pair the RGBs of every other product to match with it, which is what we did. But if you don't like this color, then it could be a huge turnoff for you. And speaking of matching the RGBs, the only product that we unsuccessfully matched was the graphics card. And this here is the EVGA RTX 2060 Super, which you can find for around $180 on places like Jawa, Mercari, and eBay if you're willing to buy used. This GPU does indeed have RGB that lights up the letters and underneath the GPU as well, but our RGBs were slightly defective and I couldn't get the colors to work properly. So I just turned this off to make the build look as clean as possible. And if you are thinking about using this as a template for your next budget gaming PC, I would highly recommend considering AMD's RX 5700 XT instead of this 2060 Super. Don't get me wrong, the 2060 Super is a great option for 1080p gaming and there's a metric ton of them available on the used market since they were so popular, but the RX 5700 XT does provide more FPS per dollar if that's what your main priority is. I recently benchmarked and reviewed these cards side by side in my top three GPUs under $200 video, which again is in the upper right hand corner, and the RX 5700 XT performs slightly better than the 2060 Super and it averages around $150, which is cheaper on the used market. Both options are great though, so don't stress it too much and you'll be happy with either of these choices. All in all, here's what my final parts list is looking like and we got really close to that $500 total mark, which I think is pretty solid considering the aesthetics and especially the performance that we're about to see. If you do ever want help with putting together a parts list for your own gaming PC build, head on over to zaxtechdrift.com slash consulting because I'd love to help you out with that. But yeah, let's hop into these benchmarks. First up, we tested Apex Legends so Sam can flex some hopefully good headshots and when using 1080p in high settings, we got a solid FPS average of 136. After that, we tested GTA 5. Is anyone else getting ultra hyped for all the GTA 6 leaks and news that we've been seeing lately? Let's go! And here using 1080p in very high settings, we got 123 FPS. Fortnite followed up after that. And just as a heads up, I've been scratching my own Fortnite itch recently. This is Sam's benchmarking footage here, but just know that I've been grinding away on this game at home with no builds. And I think I might make a push for the rank play here soon. And I'll keep you guys updated on that. Comment down below if you wanna see an OG Fortnite benchmarking montage in our next video. But yeah, here with 1080p in pro settings, we got an FPS average of 264. After that, we tested Diablo 4, which has slipped away from me a bit. And in 1080p with high settings, we got 100. 20 FPS. Clearly this budget PC is capable of utilizing a higher refresh rate monitor if you were wondering. Finally, we tested 3D Mark's Time Spy. This is now available on the Epic Store if you didn't see the news, by the way. Not sure who that would make happy though. But yeah, we got a score of 8,630, which indicates incredible price to performance. You can also see here that our GPU was only ever peaking at around 65 degrees, which is amazing to see, all thanks to our Asia Horse Sag Bracket Cooling Solution thing. And finally, for some more benchmarks here, the other games that we tested, the Intel i5 10400F and RTX 2060 Super is already already a proven combination, and it's a pretty popular one from a few years ago. And here in 2023, it has absolutely no problem playing literally any game you throw at it in 1080p. Be sure to let me know what you think of this gaming PC build guide or what you would do to change it without going over budget. And if you wanna see just a different way on how to spend $500 for your next build, feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.